Quantum is a hard technology. I'll just outright start off by saying that. It's hard because you've got to make advances in your quantum processes. You've got to make advancement on how you put the system together, material science, lots and lots of innovations. But the fact that it's hard makes it exciting, makes it interesting. It's now, I'll tell you, an engineering problem to scale it from where we are to where it's going to be incredibly useful for the world. We think that's a three to four year journey from where we are. Just fact, we have 13 quantum computers, each one with over 100 qubits, quantum bits. It's a way of getting the scale of these machines that you can access on the cloud today. One of the difficulties, of course, is the security and the national interests relating to quantum. Um, it's highly restricted in many cases, well, most cases. Well, so th the worry is about uh, quantum could break encryption. That, I think, is going to be quite a ways out. That's not necessarily in the near term. The, any advanced technology, nations tend to restrict. But there's a lot of friendly nations still, and we can always give access to friendlies and to enterprises whom we can trust uh, over, the, over the cloud. How much of IBM's future relies on quantum? Look, it's always, in, in my role, we've got to be able to diversify the company. So we're never going to say that the entire future depends upon it. But if I look at it, hybrid cloud is where we are today. AI is coming. I wouldn't say that AI is mature, so that's why I'll say AI is coming. And the next layer in of innovation is quantum. I think that's the way that we look at it, so it's in the top three. And as you, as you manage those top three, you're a huge company. The ability to pivot or to change priorities at any given moment is highly limited. I would disagree. So we are a focused company. If I look at the journey we've been on, software was 20% of the company about five, six years ago. It's now almost half the company, 45%. If I look at services, it was 60% of the company, now it's 30%. So that's a pretty good pivot, wouldn't you say so? Uh, growth rate was the negative, now it's in the plus three range. Uh, we just committed 5% plus to the street. Software is growing at 10%. Those are all achievements in the last three or four years. We're in very difficult and different times. The trade relations between nations, particularly now since the Trump administration has come in, is going to be much very con constrained and strained. How will this affect you? So two parts to it. One, on the actual supply chain, we believe that one should always have a diversified supply chain. So I'll just put the supply chain and then say diversification is good and put it on the side. Look, trade relations between nations are incredibly important to be able to do business in all countries. And I believe that as long as we can maintain good trade relations, uh, tariffs to the side, we can be in good shape. So that is where I would go. The difficulty for you is that uh, the administration is now adding friendly nations, previous allies, companies or countries where you would do business. That's more of a problem. They're not restricting what we do there. So that is why the trade relations are critical. As long as it's a level playing field and we can go ahead and compete for business in other places, in some areas we have absolutely unique technology, so it's less of a concern. In some other areas, if you begin to advantage some companies over others, that's where I think it would be unfair. We haven't seen that yet, but maybe it'll get there, but I hope not. Finally, when, when we look at it, particularly in the, in the research and development. How, how much do you spend on R&D? Uh, we spend about 12% of our revenue, so we are up to about uh, almost $8 billion. $8 billion. Eight, that's a huge amount. Is there such a thing as an aha moment in, in research? Does it happen? Of course there is. I remember back in 2016, we were sitting down and talking to our quantum computing scientists. Yeah? And at that time, the people are still playing around in the lab. It was two, three, four qubits. And then they're still talking about it. And I said, do you think we can stand one up on the cloud? And they went back and thought about it for a week. And they said, yeah, we did this and this and this. And that's an aha moment. Because you take it from there and you say, could we go to 20? Yes. Could we go to 30? Yes. Could we go to 100? Yes. That's an aha moment. And by the way, the roadmap we constructed, this is now eight years later, we have met every one of the milestones.